Look, I'm fully aware in this era of the contrarian anti-nostalgia crowd attempting to go back and overanalyzing past the shows is a thing now. Somehow, the consensus is now it's only good because of nostalgia. A lot of these complaints can be said for even past the shows that I grew up watching, like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, but also in an era in which was regarded as the greatest product that the WWF had ever produced. Calling it overrated is hardly unpopular nor original considering the fact that we as human beings aren't going to like everything we see on TV. And you are within your right to feel that way. Most logical people who actually have a functioning brain would just simply not watch something if they didn't enjoy the content on television. Unfortunately, not a lot of people in this generation have a functioning brain, and is one of the main reasons why human beings continue to becoming more stupider every day. Because you don't like something and yet you keep talking about it or continue watching it like a lot of these pathetic wrestling fans who miserably watch every single week. This video is going to be a defense towards the attitude error from a bunch of these revisionist history type nerds on the internet who want to try and demean the error any way possible, just to make today's product not seem like it's all that bad, when really they're just looking for a justification for why they continue to watch every single week because wrestling is all they have going for them. And um, yeah, I'm basically going to be debunking a lot of these criticisms from a lot of these uneducated fans of wrestling that misunderstood the error and its raunchy content. For all I care, you can call me an Attitude Era fanboy like I'm supposed to give a shit, but like all good irrational human beings would do, I'm going to address what needs to be addressed. The arguments I hear are quite ironic considering the things I hear people complain about are the things that made it the Attitude Era, and some of those things they're defining in characteristics, like the sex and the violence and legendary segments involving a D-Generation X making fun of the Nation of Domination, which I can safely say I enjoy even for someone like me who's black in descent. Um, but yeah, like other moments involving The Undertaker and Stephanie McMahon's wedding ceremony and the This Is Your Life segment are just a few examples I could name. Hell, I'll even hear people cherry-picking a few bad moments like Mae Young giving birth to her hand, Mark Henry almost having sex with a transvestite, and Choppy Choppy the Peepee, which I actually thought was pretty funny as a 10-year-old, and didn't really mind it that much. But like, yeah, okay, no one said that the era was perfect. Nothing's perfect. It doesn't mean it wasn't good or that the era that we are living in right now is any better. At the end of the day, your perspective is subjective and lacks any type of objectivity. Because pointing out a few things that most people would agree were bad it doesn't diminish the era in any way possible. Because at the end of the day, the numbers speak for itself. Even for people who say that the ruthless aggression era was so much better, ignore a lot of the dumb stuff that they've done. Uh, yeah, that era did as much bad, or at least it did as much of the types of stuff that you people complain about. From the Dominic storyline involving Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero, Heidenreich Dry humping Michael Cole, Katie Vick, oh yeah, I'm sure a lot of you would agree on that one. Even though I thought the angle itself had a lot of potential. A storyline involving the McMahons taking on Shawn Michaels and God, Triple H's Reign of Terror, and you people want to say that the Ruthless Aggression Era was so much better, and that it was a good thing that they got away from a lot of that Jerry Springer crash TV stuff as if they didn't do as much bad? Get the fuck out of here with that shit. Oh wow, the matches were so much better. Honestly, like, who cares? Like, who the fuck watches for a 20-minute snooze fest? Telling an effective story was the whole point of the Attitude Era. It was a far more entertaining time period, the segments, backstage skits, etc. Everything was done better in the Attitude Era. And for all the people that loved the Ruthless Aggression Era but hate today's era, you shouldn't really look back at that era too fondly anymore as this was ultimately the era in time where WWE started putting more of a focus on longer matches and technical wrestling, which further helped contribute to wrestling's decline in popularity for the rest of the 2000s. But I'll save that for another video because I honestly feel like a lot of you people overrate this era as if we were still in the Golden Age. No, the Golden Age died in 2001. Get over it. Like, seriously, all you smarts on the internet going on about Paul Heyman Smackdown and the Smackdown 6, get the fuck out of here with that shit. Like, seriously, I'll take the fucking Dudley Boys, the Hardys, and Edge and Christian any day of the fucking week over the Smackdown 6. And speaking of in-ring action, for those that say that the wrestling has gotten so much better, it tells me that you know nothing about a little thing in the business called the psychology, which is basically non-existent nowadays, because every match is 5 to 15 minutes of high spots and flashy bumps, like there's no storytelling at all in the matches and yada yada yada. But for the people that criticize the era for the bad in-ring action, yeah, even though the era still had a lot of classic matches that I can name off the top of my head from Stone Cold vs. The Undertaker at Fully Loaded in 99, 
Triple H vs. The Rock at Backlash 2000, Stone Cold vs. Triple H at No Way Out 2001, TLC2, The Rock vs. Stone Cold at Backlash 99, Triple H vs. Cactus Jack in that street fight, um, fucking The Undertaker vs. Mankind at King of the Ring, the latter match between the Hardys and Edge and Christian at No Mercy 99, and I can name a few more. But apparently, the WWF had such terrible in-ring action. It's probably the focus on hardcore matches, brawls, and brawn panty matches, but didn't focus on the technical wrestling that much, unless you were watching a Chris Benoit or Chris Jericho match at Judgment Day 2000, or a bunch of great high-flying from S.A. Rios or Eddie Guerrero. Was the in-ring action good for the most part? No, but it didn't need to be because WWF was more focused on the raunchy cutting-edge storylines and characters that the wrestling became secondary. I mean, it's no coincidence that the business is a whole lot better when the wrestling isn't an all-time focus. Even Hogan and Warriors match at WrestleMania 6 wasn't a 5-star classic according to the Meltzer marks out there. The wrestling may not have been good for the most part in that era, but at least when the matches wanted to be good, it was great. And matches like that for me are way more meaningful when you have a good match here and there to bounce off of interesting feuds and characters that you actually give a shit about. What I'm trying to say is it's all about quality over quantity. It's not about how many good matches you have, but how you make those good matches great. I've said this before trillions of times, but storylines and characters is what makes wrestling great. Matches should be saved as a big time climax or a big fight feel atmosphere. Good matches nowadays are a dime a dozen and have no meaning to them whatsoever. And that's how I see it. When you've seen one good match, you've pretty much seen them all. Um, but yeah, the big reason people look back at the Attitude Era in a negative light when they analyze it is because people don't want to admit that they actually liked it. Including the sexism. Because there are a bunch of SJWs appealing to the faggots in this generation with a PC mindset. People like to use the whole excuse that Oh, well, I was young and, like, not aware of the bad stuff. Dude, like, I was in my pre-teen years of the peak of the Monday Night Wars and loved every bit of it. I knew what was going on. It was great. It took risk. It pushed the envelope. Did they go a little too far? Honestly, no. And that's what made it great. Because as a person with thick skin, it takes a lot to offend me. And honestly, now that I'm older and I look back at it all, I kind of thought WWF was a little too tame at times. Even ECW felt a little too tame at times, but that's just me. Um, I kind of wish the ECW would have done a little more with the nudity, considering it was supposed to be a bit more mature than WWF at that time being. But that's neither here nor there. But at the end of the day, controversial content and shock value is what creates cash. And that's what Russo did best whether you like him or not. If you don't push harder, then how are you going to get people to really want to watch? Controversy creates cash. If you're not in it to make money, then what are you in it for? The reason it was so popular was because most people had never seen anything like it in the WWF. It was fresh, it was new, it was cool, it was going along with the trends of the late 90s with South Park and Jerry Springer at their peak, and even appealing to the Beavis and Butthead crowd. Obviously it would never work today beyond the censors or people complaining. It would feel like a rehash not new and fresh and plus based on how the WWE has handled nostalgia angles in the past, they would most likely fuck it up. Would I love to see it come back? Fuck yeah. But I'd rather the writing improve first and smart people in the business come up with new ideas to make it better. The Attitude Era was good for the time being, but I want to see something go beyond that. I want to see a wrestling product go far beyond what the Attitude Era was capable of. It was mainly more creative than today's product, which over the last decade has become way too heavily censored. And sure, there are kids to consider, but those kids will eventually become 14 plus like we all were. Just as the Attitude Era was starting up and we were all thinking of flipping the channel to WCW Nitro more permanently before it took off. But in this day and age, if WWE don't buck up their ideas, then there won't be an alternative promotion to switch over to as GAEW is hardly a powerhouse because of all the, the selfish marks that refuse to do business the right way. And it will be the death of mainstream wrestling, which could have a knock-on effect and put wrestling back in the Dark Ages before the very first WrestleMania back in 1985, or even the early to mid-90s. And I say this as someone that started watching wrestling during the mid-90s, you know, during that in-your-house era, but I have more fond memories watching the WWF during its darker and grittier stages. I remember before I got into wrestling, I never really liked it because of how corny it was. 
And I'm speaking as a kid who was already into shit like Batman, the animated series, Doom, Gargoyles, Mortal Kombat, and Beavis and Butthead getting me into a lot of kick-ass bands. Like, WWF were so behind the times that even Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was more badass than they were from 93 to 95. And the only reason I got into wrestling was because I had nothing better to watch on that day. Back in, like, late 95, my dad forgot to pay the cable bill for me to watch Nickelodeon. So I pretty much had to settle into watching whatever was on TV for the month. So I figured while flipping through channels that I might as well give wrestling a shot on the USA Network, since it pretty much was the only sport that I could never get bored with. Um, like, even though it was silly. Cause I knew my uncle was a huge WWF fan back in the 80s, but that was until Hogan left. And he was a huge Hogan mark. So he would only watch the pay-per-views of WCW back in 95, and watch more of the Nitros, and I would casually watch with him and would occasionally switch back to Raw on the USA Network. But that was until the Outsiders angle took place on Nitro, cause at the time I thought WWF was gonna invade Nitro, and remembered thinking that the third man was gonna be Bret Hart since he had not been seen since WrestleMania 12. And when Hogan was revealed to being the third man, everybody was pissed. But I was like the only person eating this shit up because I'll be honest, the whole eat your vitamins and say your prayers was kind of corny to me, um, even as a kid. But when Hogan became a bad guy, that completely changed my perception of him as a kid. So I basically religiously watched the Nitros back to back every single week with my uncle. I started finding out about ECW and then started getting back into WWF around 97. And then attended WrestleMania 14 live with my uncle, since I've lived in Boston my whole life. It was a great experience, I still have the ticket to this day, and that's how I became a wrestling fan. As a kid, that's what wrestling was for me, and in my opinion, wrestling has always worked better when it was TV-14 and aimed at teenagers and young adults from the ages of 14 to 34. Um, you know, a cutting-edge product with controversial storylines and angles and shock value and blood and guts, sex and violence, and the gritty stage presentation, rock and roll, men acting like men, and women acting like women. You know, just everybody knew their roles and got over. And it worked. That's why the Attitude Era is so fondly remembered. People could relate to a lot of what the product was at the time being. The Attitude Era appealed to a lot of young men, and young men loved it. And it was very, very popular. Plus, your school's experience seems to have the experience. I mean, go back and watch the Attitude Era shows and look at the attendance. And notice that they are mostly teenage boys. WWE could not pull off the amount of success, attendance, ratings, revenue if it was only popular with a small portion of the young male demographic. The majority of the males back then wore some type of WWF or WCW merchandise at least once a week. People who didn't at least casually know what was going on in wrestling were usually known as the outcast or the losers that everybody made fun of. Funny how in 2021 the tides have changed. Wrestling has never been and probably never will be as popular as it once was back in the 98 to 2000. I don't know what was wrong with the place you were living in at the time being, but that's not how it was for most places. Even kids in my generation at the time period wore tons of WWF clothing, and there were tons of carts in the local malls that sold the VHS compilations, the figurines, and memorabilia or shirts, depending on where you were. Now that I think about it, I'm nearly certain that Hot Topic sold wrestling t-shirts, but that might be my own case of mistaken memory. But yeah, wrestling was so popular at my elementary and middle school years that I literally had to start watching Raw more often in 97, so that I wouldn't be left out in these circles of discussion. But yeah, a lot of kids got to create tag teams and stables and argue over who got to be Road Dog, or who got to be X-Pac. It was pretty common knowledge that it was predetermined, but as kids, you don't care. The teenagers and adults were more concerned with what was going on in ECW because it felt more real. I was in 5th grade to middle school, and wrestling was like the hottest thing besides Pokemon. Hell, even my teachers watched wrestling, and he'd often discuss it in class on Tuesday mornings. Back then, watching wrestling was like the cool thing to do. I would often at times strike up a conversation in my elementary school, and tons of people would like jump in. And not just for the people who were in the circle of wrestling fans, but even like teachers were coming into school talking with me and my friends about Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, etc. But yeah, it was actually mainstream back then and not the mainstream that Vince McMahon tries to push nowadays. But by the time I got to high school, not many people I knew watched the wrestling besides a few friends I knew. 
So yeah, again, for all you wrestling fans that want to say that the Ruthless Aggression Era was so great, get the fuck out of here. It didn't even hold a candle. And that's just the truth, so I don't want to fucking hear it. But as for today's product, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I really don't see it becoming big again without a change in culture and management. You also have to remember the company's methods have changed drastically from those days. But, you know, the focus is still on making money, but they'd rather stick to what worked than to try something new. Or at least until Vince McMahon is dead, of course. And, you know, I really can't stand a lot of these 2020 progressives are hating on the Attitude Era. Meanwhile, you moan about today's WWE having no edge and it's PG. Yet you moan about the trashy stories of the Attitude, which were really just comedy bits between the legit angles. Firstly, you really gotta get a sense of humor. It's wrestling entertainment. The problem is, is that the PG keeps getting less and less entertaining. Yes, the Attitude Era was of its time and maybe it wouldn't work in 2021, but it was a period where all the pieces fell into place to make a pretty unique product. It was fast, brash, controversial, and above all exciting. And I'd include WCW and ECW as vital to the success of that era. By acting like the Attitude Era wasn't the most riveting and absolutely best TV wrestling has ever produced, it sounds downright dopey and uninformed. I mean, like, check out the ratings from 1998 to 2021, and then talk about how wrestling doesn't suck balls now. No, it's not nostalgia or people making it better than it was, because they were setting records for Raw that will never be touched again. Just look at the 50-50 booking and WWE's inability to get over anyone on their own. Like, dude, they had a roster full of stars during the Attitude Era. Now, what stars exist nowadays? Like, it shouldn't even be called Raw anymore. It's a slap in the face to when Raw was Raw. And when it was Raw, it stood for Real American Wrestling. Nowadays, it stands for Ridiculous Asinine Wrestling. I mean, go to YouTube or Dailymotion or whatever, then watch Raw from 98 and check out the fans, then tune into this shit they call Raw now. It was mostly a bunch of college frat heads and teens who just wanted to watch Raw and have a good time. And I really miss the days when wrestling fans in the crowd were just normal people and not a bunch of Star Wars nerds or otakus with a PC mindset that just hijack shows driving away even more casual fans. And the PG era is just an example of the PC pussy world we live in right now. Like, I wish my grandfather's generation could just come back to life and just wipe out this era of pussies we live in right now in this country. Hashtag fuck millennials. Generation X rules. But yeah, wrestling now is so generic. The creative of freedoms were more back then due to people not getting their high horse all the time. This is what people mean when they want the Attitude Era to come back. They want to be entertained and not bored to death with the same old shit in today's product. We just want more raunchier material for the sake of our entertainment. I mean, like, I don't know how else you can make it good because in-ring action and long matches never drew a dime. And kiddie entertainment doesn't work anymore. Like, it's not the 80s anymore, and WWE is in a weird state because they're not evolving with today's generation, where it's trying to pander to children being ran by entitled millennials that want things to go their way all the time, and basically have spoilers running around all over the internet. Like, any era would be so much better. You have to keep in mind that people weren't butthurt little bitches back in the 90s, so back then it was considered acceptable to tell jokes, make fun of people, and just watch sexy content. And oh boy, this is where I get to the complaints of the Attitude Era so-called objectifying women. Yeah, I can't even believe I have to go there because this is living proof that these people never got wrestling and what it's all about. So, the Attitude Era objectified women. Yeah, sure. Oh yeah. They degraded them in every way possible. Every way possible. Oh, you're just cherry-picking. Hey, if you guys want to cherry-pick a few of the so-called bad then I should be allowed to cherry pick a few moments that a lot of you refuse to even mention. Which I can honestly presume a lot of you didn't even grow up watching the Attitude Era because I could honestly tell you're just the same people who have been watching for a few years and just go off of what you've heard from wrestling channels like Wrestling With Regret or fucking What Culture based on their biased revisionist history videos. Now all of a sudden you think you know shit. The Rock says know your role and shut your opinions are not in void. But as for the people that grew up watching during that time, you really need to stop acting like a bunch of Simpson white knights. Wrestling has always been about boobies and sexism that drew in the fans to the WWF. What messages did it send to the young boys watching it? Well, as someone who grew up watching it, let me tell you, it didn't. 
none of my friends or I were under the delusion that this wrestling stuff was real. We all knew that by that point that wrestling was entertainment. In fact, you could argue that the Attitude Era was so over the top that there was no way anyone, or at least no one knew at the time being, could mistake it for being real. Especially given the time slots it was being broadcasted in. Besides, it's not like there wasn't instances of men being objectified as well. You could argue that the character of Val Venus was an objectified character as his sole reason for existing was to bring in the female fans. What about Shawn Michaels? He was the sexy boy at the time being before the Attitude Era even took place. What about Mr. Ass showing off his well? Duh. And speaking of asses, what about Rikishi shoving his fat ass in men's faces every single week? Need I go on? Let's also not forget about the fact that Vince McMahon has always had a penchant for big muscular guys. If that's not objectification in and of itself, then I don't know what is. Sexism? Please. Women do the exact same thing for Roman Reigns because he's good looking. But it's sexist if men do the exact same thing? You get the double standards here from a lot of these feminists? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but nothing, okay? I mean, men are not wearing t-shirts and only underwear all the fucking time. Have you ever noticed that? Weren't guys like Austin and Rock wearing less clothing than, let's say, someone like a Sable whenever they'd wrestle? Like, what kind of a sexism are you talking about? Get the fuck out of here with that shit. The majority of wrestling fans choose their favorite male wrestler based on how good they look. So, we can do it for males but not females? Are you saying that you want all wrestling fans to be gay? <clears throat> this is how I know feminism has tricked the minds of people. I can never understand how one can only be sexist towards women. It's a discussion about double standards, but every time men speaks up, someone calls him dumb. Like, I'm sorry, but I feel sorry for the young boys growing up in this generation now. Like, seriously, it's about time to put these sexism talk to rest. We all want to see many wrestlers being chosen based on how they look. That's the whole point of being a TV character. So how is it unfair for a woman to be objectified, but it's fine when men face similar scrutiny? Is that an issue, though? In essence, there is no difference in picking a woman for her sex appeal or picking a man for his muscles and height. True, you are trying to get a different reaction from the fanbase, but it's still a reaction on their physique. As long as the wrestlers don't find their work degrading, then I don't think overly sexual female characters are a problem. A woman playing a slut is just as harmful as a man playing a misogynist. But neither are an issue if they're being played by consenting adults. There's absolutely nothing wrong with using sex appeal to sell tickets. Yes, you can make it classy sex like Playboy, but there's nothing wrong with Hustler either. Women can decide for themselves whether they are being oppressed by getting paid to show off their body. When female pop stars like Madonna, Jennifer Lopez, and whatsoever dance half naked on stage, is that not sexist? What about all the girls watching them? Did anybody see the pictures of Miley Cyrus at the 2015 MTV VMA show? She wore like little to nothing. And all the while, MTV's main demographic is teenage girls. You know, so that argument is flawed. And plus, so they don't have to risk a serious injury if they were just forced to wrestle and just go out there taking a bunch of unnecessary bumps like a bunch of crass test dummies and just to risk a career-ending injury considering that women are very fragile. Yeah. Women could make a shitload of money doing sexy shit on TV. I'd argue that Deborah was a bigger draw than Becky Lynch and she didn't take any bumps whatsoever. So, the benefits of women who are only there for their looks are far greater than serious women's wrestler. At the end of the day, men did what men did best while women did what women did best. I mean, like, why do you think female porn stars make way more money than men? It's just human nature for men to be more turned on by women for their looks, and that men are physically way more stronger and more resilient than women. It's just scientific facts that you can't debate. No, what I'm saying is why should we age and sweat and die early? That's what men are for! <laughs> it was all about getting the attention of teens and young adult men, which was their primary demographic. WWF didn't really focus on the women in the same age group, though. So, women only got over because they were sexy while men were getting over for multiple factors. Sure, women still screamed for people like The Rock, but that wasn't WWF's main concern with the male roster. And don't give me the, oh, think of the children. I'm quite sure they don't market female wrestlers to children. And children don't watch female wrestlers because they are physically less capable and cool than the male ones. 
But like I said, if you didn't want your child watching something, then just to change the channel. You don't want to have your kids watching skinly clad women on TV, but yet you have no problem with them watching two men resorting to violence to solve their problems. Yeah, Americans are a funny bunch, aren't they? But if the parent feels that the wrestlers are a poor role model for their kids, then they shouldn't let their kids buy their merchandise. But as role models go, wrestling is generally a terrible place to find one. Your favorite wrestler telling you to eat your vitamins in between breaking people in half isn't exactly optimal. The message we are sending to young boys today is feeling guilty for their sexuality and not being as important as the female half of the species. At least the Attitude Era was fun. Anybody with half a brain knows it's just a TV show. People like me used to watch wrestling because it was our escapism. If let's say we were having a shitty life, or we came back from school or had a hard day at work, and you could just turn on the TV and watch USA or TNT on Monday nights back in the late 90s to just simply turn your brain off and have fun. We used to watch wrestling for the entertainment value, and not this preachy woke shit that has plagued the entertainment industry. And because of that, you've taken away our entertainment but persist on telling other wrestling fans to move on from the Attitude Era when there isn't anything worth a damn in today's product. But yet you have the audacity to tell fans to just simply not watch anymore if they don't like it. Well, thanks for the advice, because the ratings are continuing to go downhill more and more year after year because WWE still continues to ignore the real fans that supported their product through the years. Yeah, some white knight you are. Oh, we're the real fans. No, you're just a bunch of sheep. The real fans are the ones that left. But back to the marks that blame the Attitude Era for the sexism, Sable, etc. You should really blame ECW for starting the whole thing with darker and edgier content. They also popularized the violence against the women in the USA. Say, Francine, Beulah McGillicuddy, Don Marie. No, but I bet a lot of internet marks, especially WWE marks, didn't really watch during those times. Or even watch them in ring at all. Like, seriously, it sounds like a lot of what you people had against the Attitude Era has more to do with your political views than actual flaws. Yes, those women were dressed rather revealing, but at least most had some level of character. Like, I'd much rather take an interesting stripper over a boring piece of cardboard in a partially skimpy outfit any day of the week. Yes, the Attitude Era had flaws, but it had more highlights than follows a direct inverse to the current product. But since we're on the whole feminism topic, if you women really do stand up for what you believe in, then why don't you step up and prove yourselves? Prove to me that you could be like a TNA's knockout division from 2007 without some desperate social media campaign backing you up. But in actuality, your views have more holes in them and at this point is no longer criticism but borderline whining. You didn't like what you saw, then you're in the wrong business. A few complained about the Ministry of Darkness Undertaker and I'm like, what? <laughs> so Ministry Taker was bad for acting like a cult leader, which is considered over the top? even though it added to the chaos in the era, because this was by far the most sinister he's been in his entire career. I was a huge fan of Ministry of Darkness and 1998 Lord of Darkness Taker. This was honestly when the character had peaked for me. If there was ever a time a Taker was at his weakest, it was probably his big evil gimmick from 2002. I mean, like, you know your run sucks when you're putting over Maven of all people. Fucking Maven. And there were so many things I didn't like about that run from Taker. Like, I didn't mind his biker gimmick from 2000 to 2001, and, you know, it was cool, and it was different, and Taker still got big pops, but his 2002 to 2003 run sucked. But I may save that for a future video. And I know people will constantly say, oh, well, but the ratings will never reach what it was like during the peak of that era. And I'm like, well, how do you know that? And the whole TV is dying argument is no excuse, because it is completely possible for a product in today's television world to get 7 and 8. Just look at the NBA, the NFL, The Walking Dead, Game of Thrones, Breaking Bad, and every other popular well-known product to a degree. Problem is, more than anything, is that WWE just isn't as good of a television show as their competition. I'm not even a fan of these shows, but when you have shows like that doing better than you, then you know your product is dead. So stop blaming everything else for wrestling's shortcomings and blame the actual problem at hand, which are basically a bunch of idiots in this business who are not cool whatsoever and have bad ideas for where the business should be headed. This applies to both younger and older people in the business. 
And what I really don't get is why wrestling is trying to appeal to people with a PC mindset. Not only has it failed for numerous forms of entertainment, but you have a perfectly more credible MMA product out there that appeals to more older audiences. And it's funny how the more I rewatch Tom Segura's berating of wrestling fans, but also today's wrestling in general, and how he was like, it's for kids and only retards like it, because who takes fake fights so seriously? Oh no. No shit. Isn't that the type of wrestling that Vince Russo was against? Yeah, maybe he could have been talking shit about wrestling as a whole in its entirety, but when he brought up the fact that it's for kids, I honestly had a feeling he was talking about today's product. And if that's the case, then I don't blame him one bit. That's pretty much why I put that last video together, because this is pretty much how normal people think of wrestling these days. It's embarrassing. They may not say it, but they sure damn know it. <laughs> But the real blame should be on Stephanie McBitch, Triple H, and Vince McMahon. And for all you anti-smarks out there that overrate this faggot Vince McMahon, there's a reason why I made a video on him on why he was never a genius in the first place. And I honestly plan on making a part 2 on him one day. But getting back on track. No promoter nowadays is cool and is in tune with today's society. That's what happens when you have a bunch of marks running the business. They fear trying new things because they don't know where it's going to lead. And they'd rather stick to wrestling mode because that's all they know and it keeps them safe and comfortable. But meanwhile, the ratings are dropping further and further. Wrestling badly needs a new direction because the people in the business now will never evolve the wrestling business. And I honestly would argue nobody in power in general gets today's society. And that includes Hollywood. Which brings me back to the TV is dying argument. Maybe that explains why people are cord cutting at such a high rate. Aside from Game of Thrones, which I heard ended, and maybe sports, what on TV nowadays even has people invested or interested? TV today is complete and utter dog shit. That's why. Just absolutely horrible. It's actually kind of funny too because I was actually staying at a hotel room for the past few days that had cable, and I was so glad that I brought my laptop. Nothing but boring shit on TV with the exception of Rick and Morty or Family Guy. But for the most part, people in charge today really don't get the real people who live in today's society, and not the faggots and losers who are on social media all day. But wrestling today is what it is, and I really don't give a shit to even watch two seconds of it. Because if the promoters don't care, then why should I? Like, AEW was my last hope. I gave them a chance two years ago and they blew it. So, um, oh, and people will say that the Attitude Era will never work today because of how apprehensive the promoters are with the current times. And to me, that is BS. Because all you gotta do is come out with something good and relate to today's generation. People seem to not understand that the PC police were around back then. The only difference was that there was no social media. So, soccer moms from the Midwest couldn't let their shitty opinions be heard. But the simple answer to this issue is to ignore people like that. Sensitive people are always going to complain about anything, especially now in this pussified generation we are living in. Like, any little thing could be a big issue for them. And people like that prevent other people from being creative and making interesting content. You don't realize that people are going to continue becoming overly sensitive as long as everyone else keeps appealing to them. It doesn't solve the issue and really does not benefit anybody. And it's that mindset that's really holding back wrestling from ever becoming cool again. Because whether you liked this particular era or not, you can't deny that this was the last time wrestling was relevant and was socially acceptable. And that's a fact. You may say that popularity does not equate to quality. Well, at the end of the day, it's all subjective. You can have your gay little opinions that no one gives a shit about, but you can't defeat me with facts. Once again, know the role and shut the mouth because your shitty taste and gay opinions are beneath me. Thank you and good day.